Rock Church, it's so good to be with you. This morning as we worship the Lord, the book of Joshua says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord or we will praise the Lord. And today we're so grateful that we get to lead you in worship. So wherever you are, from our home to yours, won't you stand, sing along, lift your hands, lead your families as we praise the Lord. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And hope
Go 
Well, Nate, thanks so much for organizing with you and your housemates worship this week. It's, uh, I love getting my family up on their feet to worship, as strange as it may be to do it at home, but we do it. So thank you so much for, for giving that, uh, that gift to us. How are you doing? Yeah, Roy, it's such a pleasure to be able to do that. I'm so blessed that I, I live in a house full of musos and worshipers. So it actually is something that I'm so grateful for to answer your question how I'm doing. This week didn't start off so well. Um, you know, Monday and Tuesday coming out of Easter weekend, the real, um, just the real feeling of feeling really confined and separated from people got to me. Um, but I'm grateful that through being intentional and kind of worshiping with my friends here at home, that I get the opportunity to really press in for God's favor. Like that song that we sang this morning is all about, you know, just really sitting under the, his presence and allowing him to speak his goodness over me. So I, I had to do a bit of work this week in terms of really practicing that, but uh, I'm in a really great space now feeling very hopeful as I speak to you right now. Amazing, bro. I, I just love how you go into that. You know, we've all going through difficult things. I, I felt at the beginning of this week as well, just it was, just, it was something different. And speaking to my teammates uh, at work, even they feeling that, you know, so. But I think the, yeah, key, thing, the key thing that you really touched on there was just that, that gratitude um, and, and realizing actually what we've got, you know, it's, it's for, it's, we, we carry something of, of God's presence. So we've got, we, it's that gratitude and the gratitude of just that we live privileged lives. So that's, it's beautiful that you're pushing into that. That's it. It really is about recognizing the blessing. Hey, and it, it's so interesting that we're talking about this because Kyle and Rob's have got something to share with us today. Kyle and Rob and Ralph with Little Lakin. They're going to talk a little bit about what they do to kind of just help themselves stay faithful and hopeful. So let's take a look at that. Hello. Hey. Hello, Rock family. We just wanted to say hello to everyone and send our love. We've been missing everyone's faces so much. Um, 
We've just been trying to make the most of this lockdown. Um, we're so grateful because we feel like God has been preparing us so much for this time as a family since the beginning of the year. Um, he's been speaking to us about living with intention and living with more gratitude and thanksgiving. So we've been <clears throat> able to just journey this thing with the right hearts. Um, we have loved spending more time with Lakin and as a family, um, even though we're missing all our beautiful friends, we're so grateful for Zoom and FaceTime and yeah, just actually having to be a little bit more intentional about how we spend time with our loved ones. We just wanted to share one of the verses that has been such a big part of our lives since we started this year. Um, I'll read it to you. It's from Proverbs 4, 21 to 23. It says, Fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your spirit. Then, as you unwrap my words, they will impart true life and radiant health into the very core of your being. So above all, guard the affections of your heart, for they affect all that you are. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being, for from there flows the wellspring of life. And I couldn't believe that part about um, how his words will impart true life and radiant health, which just felt so apt for the season that we're walking through right now and just trusting God to be able to impart that health and to cover our loved, one, loved ones. Um, yeah, so we just, we have a practice where every day when we start to feel negative thoughts enter our minds, we stop and we speak out loud three things that we're grateful for. So maybe if you're walking through stuff, you can appreciate that practice too. Um, it's helped us majorly. Every day has been so different because of it. Yeah, just a quick testimony from my side. Um, as most of you know that I, I am a self-employed personal trainer. So when times like this hits, uh, I know it's affected most of us. Yeah, it was really stressful um, and anxiety is always quick to creep in. And I basically just sent a message to all my clients just stating I understand the circumstances. Uh, I'm happy for you guys just to freeze your accounts for now until this blows over. Um, but should you wish to carry on, uh, I will send you content from home, um, do your home workouts and send you footage and all that stuff. And then I'm happy also just to reduce your costs. Uh, two of my, my major paying clients came back and they said, Carl, we, we're more than happy to carry on training at home. Um, and furthermore, we refuse to, to take a reduction in our costs. We, we're happy to pay you the full amount. So um, along with them, other clients have also just chosen to stay on. So God's really just showing once again how he provides for us through all these times. He always goes before us. He's never caught unaware. Um, yeah, he's, he knows what we're going through. He's aware of our surroundings and what's going on here. And um, yeah, so it's just a great testimony of his provision over our life, regardless of our, our circumstances. Blow kiss. Oh, dear, the kiss. Blow it. Amazing. Thank you, Kyle and Robs. That is so practical and so great. Rory, it's really simple. Just three things to be grateful for, bro. Can you believe it? Just three things, bro. Listen, one of the things I was grateful for last week was Rory's eight word sermon. Uh, but this week, I'm sure Naman's going to use a few more words and we're going to laugh as he does it. So let's hand over to Mark as he gives us the word. Yeah, good morning to you guys. Great to be together again this Sunday morning. Um, I hope that you've had an incredible time this morning in your homes, worshipping together as a family. I trust you got up, got dressed, got together and just enjoyed that time of worship. What a beautiful time to be together as a family. I just, uh, I just know that God is doing such incredible stuff at this time. And so I pray this morning that we'd have eyes to see and ears to hear that which God is doing. Um, thank you, Nathan, and your housemates again for just blessing us with that time of worship um, to, to uh, Rob's and to Carl and to Lakin. What a beautiful picture of God and the generations. It's as we sang that song um, of the generations and the blessing. Just seeing that already in your lives with the Lakin and what God is doing in and through. Just so encouraged. And again, those eight word sermons, keep them coming. They just are so full of life, just building us up in our faith. And so, yeah, this morning I feel very encouraged. I feel um, excited to be together. I feel excited about living at this time um, on the earth. You know, I've said it for so many years, but it's become more real than ever that we live in very unique times. And we live in a very unique time in the history of the earth and history of the great planet 
or the great plan, should I say, that God has for this planet. We find ourselves living here in 2020 with everything that's going on. And uh, even as we sang that song this morning, the blessing, and we spoke about the God of generations, this morning I want to look at um, Hebrews chapter 11, which is a great um, part of Scripture, just speaking about the great men and women of faith, those that have gone before, and they lived in specific times and spaces, just as we have and are. Um, you know, the book of, uh, book of Acts says that God knows the exact time and place where we should live. Book of um, Jeremiah speaks about God's plan to prosper us and not harm us, plans to give us a hope and a future, and that, that God places us in seasons and times, and we find ourselves here right now. And, and just to encourage you this morning that God is sovereign. God is over all things. He's large and in charge, and He is not in any way... Um, apprehensive or um, have any anxiety towards what's going on in the earth. He knows what's going on and he knows the end from the beginning. It says that Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. He knows the end. And so for us this morning as men and women of faith and men and women of, of, of God, those that profess and love and know Jesus, this morning I want to encourage you in your faith by the book of Hebrews and some, some of the stuff that I've seen in there um, this morning. And I love this. I'm just going to read a little bit from Hebrews chapter 10. Um, and verse 23, it says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. And so this morning, my job and my plan and my, my hope is that I'm going to spur you on in love and good deeds as we spend time in God's Word and Holy Spirit with quicken stuff inside of you. And so this morning, um, as we look through this thing in Hebrews, I mean, as I've said, you, you find yourself living where you are right now. I want to encourage you by this word that we see over and over in the book of Hebrews. It speaks about by faith. And uh, let me start off with verse 1 of chapter 11. Here it goes. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. So, so we understand. So, so faith is the, another translation. Is faith is the surety of, of stuff and it's the conviction to live it out. So this morning, as we, as we think about faith, as we think about living right now at this time, faith is not only a distant reality. It's not, although it is one day when Jesus returns, we will be with him in heaven on the earth forever. Absolutely. That, that our faith in that is secure and steadfast, but it's also an understanding that our actions now, the way we live now is connected to a future reality. It's, it's in this season, as we live now, we live by faith. We live by faith and the assurance that Christ is coming back and assurance that he has died to make a way for us to boldly enter. It says that in chapter 10, you can go and read it, boldly enter the, the throne room of grace. So for me, there's this faith that gives us an assurity of a future promise, but it also gives us a conviction, the Bible says, a, a steadfastness in how to live now and how we live this with courage and how we live this with knowing who our father is, knowing that he has us, knowing that he's holding us. Um, this is what it says that they were commended for. They were commended for the fact that they had a future faith and they lived their lives boldly in the moments that they were found. I've said this to some of my mates recently. What I've realized in this time of crisis, in this time of world pandemic, that our characters are not formed now. Our characters are revealed now. What we believe, what we know is brought to the surface now. It's like, like, do we believe fully that God is for us and not against us? Do we believe fully that we are more than conquerors in Christ? Do we believe fully that nothing can separate the love of God from us? Nothing can separate, no heart, no depth, no angel, no demon, no presence, no fear. Nothing can separate from the love of God in Christ. Jesus. Do we believe that by faith? And so this morning, I want to stir us, continue stirring us in this thing. It's amazing that we understand it says in Hebrews 1, 3, that, that Jesus is the exact imprint of God. So when we understand that the universe was created out of nothing, God spoke, boom. So the, the scene realm that you live in, this world we face now and, and how found ourselves in, was created from something that was unseen. God was, boom, and it was created. And then again, the picture is of, so, so the reality we live in has a, 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 a eternal reality, a heavenly reality, a supernatural world which God lived in and he spoke and this lived world was created. And the picture for us again is in Jesus. Jesus says he's the exact representation of the Father or the exact imprint of the Father, um, Hebrews 1.3. And that is, again, the unseen God is made visible in Jesus. 
So in Christ, when we understand and we see Jesus, it gives us a picture of the Father. Jesus says, if you've seen me, the Father. He, Philip says to Jesus, show us the Father and it'll be enough for us. And Jesus says, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So this morning, what is unseen, unknown, un, um, uncertain in our world, we just say, well, we've seen God in Jesus. So our faith is that we know that he's got us. But then there's a certainty and a conviction how we live now because we've seen the invisible made visible. We've seen the world created out of nothing. So as we live now, it says in, in Acts, it says in him we live and move and have our being. I want to encourage you in your faith this morning that actually Jesus is showing us his eternal purposes as we walk out our life in the earth. I want to put it this way. So when I speak about faith, and this is a definition I found, faith is both the proof that what we believe is real. So our faith is that it's proof in Jesus that it's real, as well as the certainty that our hopes will be actualized in heaven. So faith is proof. Our faith is proof that what we believe is real. Because it actually says in the Hebrew thing, it says, we have to believe that God exists if we put our faith in him. So we put our faith in him, we believe that he exists. And in that, um, he gives us the strength and courage to live our lives out now on the earth. So this morning, as, we've, as I want to encourage you by... By the word and by, by scripture, again from the thing in, in Hebrews chapter 11, I hope I'm making myself clear is that, that we have a certain, our faith is certain, our faith is steadfast, our faith is that Jesus Christ came, that Jesus Christ lived on the earth, that he died as we, we celebrated last week in, on, on Good Friday, that he died. But then even more amazing was that he was raised on the third day and he sent it into heaven. And with that fact alone, we have security to be able to endure and take on anything that we have to in this life. You know, throughout the book of Hebrews, these men and women. So the first part of Hebrews is all about before. So it says, let me go with this. So, so by faith, Noah. By faith, Abraham. We'll come back to Abraham in a moment. By faith, Isaac. By faith, Jacob. By faith, Moses. By faith, um, Rebecca. By, I'm sorry, not Rebecca, excuse me. By faith, Rahab. And then after the, 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 the death of Jesus, it's, it talks about those that lived in the in the time after Jesus, it's about faith in what Jesus had done. It says they, they, it goes on, it's quite hectic stuff that happens here, but in that hectic stuff, it says that they lived with a, an assurity that Christ was with them and that Christ was for them and Christ had his hand upon them. And so for me, it's just so um, important for us this morning as we live in this time to be sure of our, of our faith. Mm -hmm. I, I just feel like Hebrews chapter 11, and it goes like this, which has really spoken to me is faith is a present affirmation of God's existence. It's confidence in his ability to enact change in the world and a certainty that his promises will be fulfilled. I love that. Isn't it beautiful? We know that he exists. We're confident that he has the ability to make change and we are certain that he will because he is God. The things that, that you see in the scripture of, of Hebrews chapter 11 is things that are, are powerful that these men and women do. And I just, I just kind of bullet pointed them here just so when you go and read it, you can see it. It's amazing. So it's by faith they conquered kingdoms. By faith they administrated justice. By faith they shut the mouths of lions. By faith they quenched the flames of the fire. By faith they escaped the edge of the sword. By faith weakness was turned to strength. By faith, they became powerful in battle. By faith, they routed foreign armies. By faith, they received back their dead. By faith, they endured torture. By faith, jeers and floggings they endured. By faith, they were put into prison. By faith, they were chained and persecuted. Yet they trusted in a future reality that God um, would set them free. That, as I said before, they had the present affirmation that God existed in the midst of all of that. They were confident that the ability to change their situation, and thirdly, that He would fulfill the promises that He gave them, which is a future promise of eternity with Him. We have to have an eternal perspective at this time, friends. Whatever we have to go through in this life, we know that with Christ. In this life, he gives us courage. In life, in this life, he brings breakthrough. But also, there's a future reality, which is to be with him in the new heavens and the new earth. But yet, while we live here, we live by faith and we endure whatever we need to endure. And we rise up and we become the sons and daughters of the king. We become salt and light to the world that needs us to be salt and light. We have confidence and faith in a God that exists, a God that is able to bring change and a God who will fulfill his promises in your life. I hope this is encouraging you. I hope this is stirring you. And so this morning, just to end off with, I was thinking, 
What are some of the stuff that, that helps us grow and, and increase our faith and helps us stand firm on the things that God has called us to so that we can walk through whatever it is that he's called us to walk through? Because he knows, and remember what I've said, the exact time and place where we should live. He placed us here and is giving us everything we need to be able to press through and take hold of that for which he took hold of us. Paul says, forgetting what is behind. We need to forget what is behind. Forget where we were, what, whatever, good or bad. And now press on. I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. I press on to take hold of the prize which he has for me. And there's still so much to be done. And I pray that your faith is being stirred. Even as I'm speaking, I can feel mine being stirred. And the way that we grow in our faith, friends, is the way we can be like these amazing men and women. It says amazing thing at the end. It says that the world was not worthy of one such as these. As we read about them, our faith is stirred. This talks about the hall, the great hall of faith, the great men and women of faith, the great cloud of witnesses. I, I often think what it's going to be like in heaven one day when I, I meet these guys and, 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 and we, we speak about our time, our season, our flash that we lived on this earth. I, we live in a time where history is being made right now. Generations will talk about this time. They will talk about this time. And my prayer for you and my prayer for me is that when I look back on this time, I live by faith. That my faith was stirring for those around me. My faith endured with me. I mean, I endured with my faith that I stood firm on the promises of God for my family, for my future, for our church, for our city, for our nation, for the earth. Our faith is sure Christ is for us. Okay, calm down, Mark. You're probably saying that. <laughs> but these are some of the P's. I thought there's some cool P's we can use this morning as I come to an end here. Um, some of the P's that I thought would help us. First P would be prayer. How do we grow in your faith, Mark? Well, pray. Prayer is powerful. God is throughout the, the, this time, the men and women I've been speaking to, God is drawing us back to prayer. There was a prophecy years ago about that, that, that something would happen on the earth that would bring prayerless people back to prayer. And, and, and I'm, I'm growing in that thing. I, I, I definitely don't, aren't where I want to be, but I'm definitely not where I was. And so God wants us to be men and women of prayer. And I, I love it when we pray in Matthew chapter 6, it says, pray like this. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I mean, that's pretty much what I've been saying around Hebrews. Our father, he's our dad. It's a family. He's our, he's our dad. He's our family. That word actually is Abba. He's Abba father. He's our father who art in heaven. He's in the, re, the heavenly reality. Remember I spoke about the, the visible was created out of what was invisible. He's from the invisible world. So his invisible world, which is there's no pain, no tears, no crying, no sadness, no death, no disease. That world, let that world come into our world. You are in heaven. And my friend Rory often says, you art in heaven, we art on the earth. So we need his presence and his power to live on the earth. Let your kingdom come, his rule and reign on earth as it is in heaven. It says, hallowed be your name. How reverence his name. He's holy. He's a, he's a holy God. He's, he, we, we revere his name this when we say, our father, our dad in heaven, your name is holy. You are holy. Let your kingdom reality break on in our earth and help us and guide us by faith through this season into the great inheritance that we have in you, Jesus. So prayer is massive, friends. I, I pray that you are stirred this morning to want to pray more. Number two is posture. It talks about in verse 16, let us approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So our posture is one of boldness, confidence, reverence. He's holy, but we come boldly into his presence. And it says we boldly receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. There are various emotions and stuff going on in all of our lives right now. I pray that at this time we understand our posture is be able to our posture is one of being able to go into the presence of our Father and receive grace and mercy at our time of need. Number three is our position. And Ephesians is full of it, our position in Christ. I'd love to read it, but I, it's just gonna take too long. But it talks about we are seated in heavenly realms with Christ Jesus. But Paul goes, says, I pray that um, you would have wisdom and revelation that you may know the Father better, that our, our, our position is one of at the feet of Jesus. Our position is sons and daughters of, of God. We are positioned in Christ. We are, we are wrapped in Christ. And we are pre, it says we are um, predestined to be adopted as sons and daughters. So our position is one of a beloved child with our Father. Moving on quickly. Oh, and, and in the understanding of our position, there's power that comes. It says, again in Ephesians 
to, to understand the incompar- incomparably great power for those that believe. There's power available for you. So there's prayer, there's position, there's posture, there's power. And in that, the last P that I wanted to bring is that in the middle of all of this, I pray that through understanding our faith that we have to endure, our faith that we have in Christ, our, 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 our position as sons and daughters, our posture that we boldly come into His presence, that the power is available to us, that number, whatever number, that we'll be able to pivot at this time. And what I mean by this is I've realized that this, like people are saying, what is God doing? What is He saying? Um, what can I do? And actually, it's, I don't think it's any of that stuff right now. Hopefully I've made that clear that God is for us. and not a, It's not about that. I think what God is saying to me and you is that this time we need to pivot this to say, God, I want to understand who you are. I want personal revelation of you. I want a personal revival or renewal in my life and my heart with you. God is in this. He's made a way somehow for us to have time where we can actually seek his face. We can find him in the midst of all of this. We want to pivot this by having a, a, a Damascus Road moment with God. When Paul has this Damascus Road moment with God, it's like, who are you, Lord? So I pray we pivot right now. Who are you, God? And then he goes on to say, what must I do? And I think through personal revelation of who God is and who you are in Christ, I think we're going to see the world through new lenses, through new eyes, to be able to say, Christ, by faith, as we've said, I want to pivot my life now to understand who you are and what you've called me to do. And uh, the, the, the phrase that I've been reading lots lately is personal revelation for you, friends, for me. Personal revelation of Christ, personal revelation of the Father, personal revelation who I am to him will bring corporate change. So that when we are out of this season and into whatever the beautiful season is God has for us in the future, that we would live by faith which will bring a corporate change that the world will look different. The world will look um, more beautiful, more full of God's grace towards um, others that we we encounter because we've had a personal revelation of who God has called us to be. I really hope this morning has stirred you. Um, Let me pray and then I trust that there are some um, Zoom rooms available afterwards where you can go and have a conversation with someone. Or if you need prayer, people would love to pray with you. But I'm going to go ahead and pray now. So, Father God, I thank you this morning for your word. I thank you for whoever is listening to this message. I pray that it would be clear to them. I pray that my words would be taken by you, Holy Spirit, and they would be used to touch hearts and, and refine people's minds, help them to bring their minds in alignment with your word, Lord God. I thank you that your word says that we do not conform to the pattern of this world that we'd be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And I pray that your word would help us renew our minds, that we would know that you exist, that you are for us, Lord God, that you act on our behalf, that we have a confidence that you will fulfill your promises in our life, in our lifetime. In Jesus' name, amen. Check out our bank details and Zappa code for ways to give and partner financially. Hey kids, check out the link in our bio or on the comments below in order to head over to Kids Ministry to keep the fun going. Is today your first time watching? Why not check out the link below in order to find some details about who we are and stay connected. Do you need prayer? Or if you're just keen to catch up and see some old faces, head over to the Zoom room IDs below to make sure that you can connect with people from The Rock.